We're going to climb a mountain called Bugaboo Spire, which was first climbed a hundred years ago. And we're going to climb it in the same way it was done in 1916. There were times when we were willing to bail on the whole expedition. It was just about probably the longest week of my life, I gotta admit. Yeah. I'm totally fine with that. I'm not gonna let anybody use modern rain jackets. We certainly felt what it was like a hundred years ago. We suffered it. I mean, that's what I was thinking the whole time I was climbing this. I can't believe they did this. We're really wondering how are we gonna go on? We wanted to know what it was like. Now we know. So if you can imagine that, wow, hard to believe they did it, and they're here to talk about it. Uh, part of the Bugaboo Spire Centennial Climb Project. We have uh, Brian Thompson, one of the uh, expedition leaders, or were you the expedition leader? I was the expedition leader. The leaders. expedition leader, and we have Ivan Petrov as well. So you were there, but you were taking a lot of photos. Photography, photography as well as video. Yeah, yes. okay. So did you, you did the uh, full climb as well? Uh, yes, I got uh, to the one of the last pitches. Uh, I didn't go to the very top because yeah. it was uh, beyond my ability. Well, I have to ask you that because you were brought in as a photographer. So mm -hmm. were you thinking, okay, this is a, a gig, and then you got there and you're like, what did I sign up for? No, I've, uh, <laughs> I've you done all about uh, it? similar climbing before, yeah. and I was uh, I knew what I was uh, okay. signing up for. Yeah, uh, and it certainly added uh, extra challenge doing the photography and the video I work. I could imagine, uh, Brian. So uh, tell us about this then. Okay, so we're going back to 1916, so 100 yes. years ago. Um, I'm a huge fan of mountaineering history, and I've always loved uh, reading about the pioneers of Canadian mountaineering who went out exploring our west and doing these incredible feats in the mountains without any of the modern climbing gear that we have today. And I thought, wow, well, I wish I was born in that century to be able to go out and climb the way they did and have that spirit of adventure and um, exploration. And then I thought, well, you know what? Why not try and reenact one of those climbs and see if climbers from today can go out and do the same thing? Okay. So when you, when you got there, um, were you just overwhelmed by the sense of history, for starters, and then, you know, what you were up against? Because we see pictures of this <laughs> climb. Yeah. Did, you, did you really feel like, okay, maybe I sort of bit on more than I could chew? No, no, I never thought that. No. Um, but I was overwhelmed indeed by the history. Mm -hmm. We were following in the footsteps of giants, and it was a real honor to be able to experience that. Yeah, pretty impressive. Okay, so here we see, so these would be your photos then? Yes, That we're yes. showing right now? So, so maybe, Brian, tell us about some of the, the shots that we're seeing here. I mean, uh, walk us through some of this, because it, okay, it doesn't so look too easy. N well, no, uh, that's the easy part. We're at actually right Oh, really? This is the easy part, okay. Well, except that we're lugging uh, about 700 pounds of gear and equipment up to our high camp uh, while Greg Granston, our filmmaker, is filming us. And uh, there's Ivan up on the mountain uh, taking uh, some shots of those who are going for the summit. Yeah. Okay, so who would have filmed this? So did you film uh, for the most part as well? Not only were you I, taking I photos? I filmed some segments of, of the film. Uh, most of the film work was done by Greg Gransden, our mm -hmm. film director, who also happened to uh, won an award last week. Yeah, it, the, so the Moscow, am I reading that correctly? The Moscow uh, Awards? Where, where, where exactly were, were these? Did this actually take place in Yes, Russia? yes. It's an annual film festival that takes place in Moscow, Russia. It's a, it's 20th year, an international film festival of mountain and adventure films mm -hmm. and we won the best director award for professional pretty film. impressive now I understand that not only is this premiering tonight in Ottawa but it's already premiered in 23 different cities at this point this is the 23rd this screening the 23rd? Uh, we've been across Canada in New Zealand Austria Russia um, the what's unique about tonight's screening is that we'll have um, some uh, large format photographs from the expedition on exhibit in the foyer, oh, and nice. those photographs were uh, on exhibit in Banff at the White Museum earlier in the year. Okay. Now, Brian, I'm not a climber by any means, but apparently the title, Hobnails and Hemp Rope, basically have to do with uh, some of the tools that you used. Very much so. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't have much gear and equipment like we have today uh, to keep themselves safe. All they would basically do is put on a pair of these hobnailed boots, which are leather sold leather boots with uh, these metal tricunies and uh, hobnails nailed into them, okay. and that would give them grip and traction in the snow. They would have a long um, ice axe, similar to the ones we use today, but longer, and it was called an alpenstock. Okay. To anchor into the snow and to cut steps into the ice. So, so sorry, these are these are artifacts, right? Like these weren't actually anything that you would have used. No, these are things we actually the, all these we this. used because they look kind of old. Oh, some of them are. Yeah. Uh, my, this is the ice axe I was using, <laughs> okay. and it is 100 years old. Really? Okay. You weren't concerned to break it or anything I was. Like that? Okay. <laughs> I was actually concerned that it wasn't going to hold me in a fall. 
<laughs> okay, and we brought it along anyway. Yes, yes, that's, that, <laughs> okay, that was enough. the whole point. Yeah. Uh, sorry, what, what else did you bring with you? Um, okay, so this is a, a 1916 uh, mess kit. Typical is what uh, campers would have used and climbers would have used to uh, cook and eat their food with. Mm. Uh, I've got an old pocket watch, which is how they would have told time, so that's how we tell to told time. Yeah. And the hobnail boots, we couldn't, uh, we had to have these made for us because okay. they're just not available today, okay. uh, really, on the market. So these were custom made for us. That's and this okay. is a hemp rope, okay. uh, very similar to what they would have used. It's, okay. it's just, they would be braided manila or hemp tied together and uh, doesn't have any of the elasticity, el elasticity of, yeah. uh, of modern climbing ropes. Okay. Um, so it's, it's pretty static. I guess it's a drinking uh, canteen. It's a canteen, and yeah, and a 100-year-old thermos. Oh, wow. So you were not only hoping to do, you know, maybe step by step this whole climb, but you wanted to reenact it as much as possible with even the, the tools that they used back right in the Right down to every piece of clothing we wore, uh, including the Stanfield's Union suit long underwear underneath oh, with really? the flap on the back, which Stanfield's very generously provided for us. Okay. As well as food. The food. Every, everything we ate had to be exactly what they would have eaten. Back really? Then. Yes. So it wasn't exactly tasty times. It was probably... Well, you know, it was good food. Yeah. Uh, the only problem was our 100-year-old kerosene camp stove. The kerosene fumes would come up into the food and oh, yeah? it would all taste like kerosene. Interesting. <laughs> it's an acquired taste. Yes. Uh, Ivan, so tell us about then uh, this, this premiere showing tonight. What time does it get underway? Uh, the, the film premiere tonight at Bytown Theatre at 7 p.m. Um, we'll have... Um, Brian will be doing a slideshow before the film and we'll have a couple of guest speakers uh, mm -hmm. at the screening. Um, there will be photographs in the foyer of the theater that people are welcome to see okay. before the film or after. And we'll have a short Q&A as well with uh, Greg, Brian and myself after the film. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that's the question I wanted to ask, Brian. How many people did go along with you on this expedition? There were nine people in total on the expedition. There were yeah. four of us who were r doing the reenactment. Yeah. And then we had to have a support team and film crew support team had to sort of keep the film crew safe on the mountain yeah. and get them up uh, as high as possible All right. so that they could film our Are we going to be doing any other expeditions or is this it for now? No, nope. uh, <laughs> we actually yeah. are going to do another one. Oh, in, are you? In 2018, we're uh, reenacting uh, the exploration of the Waddington Range in uh, western BC oh, by wow. Don and Phyllis Monday. That's something. That's and incredible. Then, And, and so on and so forth. You guys are just going to keep climbing until you can't well, climb anymore. We've already bought all this stuff. So. You might as well use it. You got to use it up. There you go. All right. Tonight is the premiere for Hob Nails and Hemp Rope, the documentary, and you can check it out at the Bytown Cinema, seven o'clock. Uh, coming up on daytime, the City of Ulm is happening this weekend. We'll find out more about it next.